Welcome Barbecue TV to Bell Buckle's first Best of the Buds Barbecue Contest. Here we are in the town of Bell Buckle. I'm your first lady, Carla Webb, and this is Alderman James, James Anderson. Yes, and we want to tell you a little bit about our town. This town, Bell Buckle, was actually founded in 1856. The cafe, as you can hear, is, does a wonderful business here. That's what we're hearing over the loudspeaker now. But in 1856, the town was founded by A.D. Fugit. He came to town with his family, and the town was named because of a cow, an Indian, and a bell. And there are several different versions of it, but from the best we can tell, an Indian carved a bell into a tree and took a belt off of a cow and hung it on the tree to say that this was our territory. So it was founded back then and incorporated a couple years after that, and it hasn't changed a lot. Pretty much what you saw back in 1856, you, you, you see now today, except for maybe a few changes with the people. But we're a small town of about 450? Depends on the day. Depends about 450. on the day. 450. Yeah, with tourists, we sometimes on a good day have up to twenty to 30,000 people for some of our festivals. And part of the reason we have um, a 450-some-odd people is because of the Webb School, and he's going to tell you about that. Uh, the Webb School is a day which makes it uh, the longest-running college prep school in the southeast. Day and boarding school. Uh, it's a small uh, school. Here in Bell Buckle. 300 students. It was founded in 1886. Students. Uh, and it was founded by Sony Webb, uh, who States, is a renowned educator in the United States. It's a strong emphasis on the honor system, uh, which Princeton University uh, adopted after Webb, after Webb put it together. And it basically says that uh, do nothing on the sly. Don't lie, don't cheat, don't steal. And uh, Webb students really carry that uh, with them through the, for the rest of their lives. Something interesting about Webb, did you know that they moved it, Sawney Webb, from Cullioca, Tennessee, to Bell Buckle for one reason? It's a funny story. No whiskey, because they were selling whiskey to the kids there, so now there's no whiskey, folks, in Bell Buckle, okay? But there's some good schools and a lot of friendly people and a few stray dogs and some barbecue out back. The best of the butts in Tennessee. Barbecue. There is a strong international component to the Web School, and they're a real important part of the community. Uh, generally, word of mouth from recruiting offices uh, in their home countries. And it's pretty renowned now because we produce more Rhodes Scholars than anywhere else in the country. That's right. We've graduated 11 Rhodes Scholars, which, yes. as uh, Carla pointed out, more than any other school. We're very proud of that fact. Y'all come. We love you in Bell Buckle. Come on down. You'll have a great time, whether we're having a festival or not. You won't regret it. Hi, this is Steve Rowan. Welcome to Bell Buckle, Tennessee. We're having our first annual contest here. Uh, although it's not sanctioned by Kansas City Barbecue Society, we are adhering to the rules of Kansas City Barbecue Society, including the requirements for the meat, the turn-in times, and the scoring system. This is supposed to be our first event of many. Uh, we're trying to tie it in with the Celebration Horse Show Festival, which tonight is the grand champion finale. We have 20 teams throughout all the southeast. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Philip Brazier. I'm with the Kansas City Barbecue Society, but today I'm here on sort of a, on an unofficial business. I was asked to come help try to do this first time contest here in Bell Buckle. What we're going to do is just a real quick little run through. First off, I want to explain to you, if you look at your score, plate, your scored plate, which is the big one, and the little one's your scorecard. Uh, just for legal, for legal reasons, we had, I had to try to block out the KCBS and use up last year's uh, plates and so forth and so on. That's why the little tape. Hopefully it won't be in your way when judging time comes. Okay, here's what's going to happen. The first turn in you're going to get today is pork, okay? Pork butt. They'll probably bring it, they may bring it to you sliced. They may bring it to you chopped. They might bring it to you uh, pulled, maybe in any kind of manner. So what you're going to do, your table captain here, Mr. Ricks, what he's going to do is he's going to show you one of the first you know, first turning box, okay? When he shows you that box, I need you to look at that and give it a grade of anywhere from a 2 through a 9. And he gave you this little piece of paper, give you some little idea of what those, what those are. You understand pretty much 2 through a 9 what they are kind of deal. Um, but you'll need to give it on an appearance score. You see those scoring? Your little score in the paper. If you see under appearance, you'll give a score, two through nine. Once you have judged all the first five categories, the first five entries, 
Then he's going to turn around and hand them back out to you again, and you're going to take them with a sample and put it on your plate. Mr. Rich will stick you through a little bit more when the time comes for it. Once you get all five on your plate, then you can start judging. The biggest thing we ask is that when you just start judging this very first one, go ahead and score it all the way across for both taste and tenderness before moving on to the second. That way there's no comparison judging. Even though this number four looks really good, you can't wait to get to it, don't worry about it. Go ahead and score everything else before you ever get to it. Because believe it or not, this is not a comparison judging. This is what you're doing. You're judging each entry on its own merit. How good of a barbecue is this one? Now, when I'm saying two through nines, you can use as many nines as you want to. You can use as many fours as you want to. You use five. If you've got three or four that all deserve nines, give them nines. There's no problem with that whatsoever. If it's not good, you score it not good. Give it a four or five, whatever it is. Whatever degree of bad it was, give it that. If that's the case along those lines. All right, question. Yes, sir. After I've eaten so much, is it permissible to spit some of it out? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. It is. Discreetly. Discreetly. And what we ask is you take this, if it gets down to it, that's why I'm asking. You're going to eat a lot of barbecue, so what you need to do is just take just enough to give some. But if you get that point where it's either bad enough that you don't want to taste it, and Swallow it, or you get that full. At least put it in long enough to chew it, get the flavor. And all we ask you to take a napkin. I just don't want one of those. If you're close to the edge, I don't want to see if you can get the concrete. Okay? <laughs> just get. I mean, that's a, that'd be a pretty good target yeah, right there between the right yeah. 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 right there. Be, so all I ask is you sort of do it right there. My thoughts regard it. Okay. Hopefully you won't have anything like that. Like I said, since he's splitting it up, it's not going to be near as much as, as it sounded like it was going to be to start with. So I think everything should work. I do highly recommend you open the crackers in between the entries, cleanse your palate with both the water and the cracker. I get that way from having that very first one you get is really, really sweet. At least you can get that, uh, it's that sort of taste out of your mouth before you move on to the next one. It sort of cleanses your palate. Open up your crackers and have them prepared. Now, one other thing we don't, we ask that you not do here is we ask that you not talk about it among yourselves until after you get things scoring. Once you get through the storm, we really like for you to talk it over. That way you can everybody gets sort of an idea of, well, sound like I was on the right page, or well, I was way off on that one. I thought it was hot, and everybody else is talking about it sweet. We, we really want you to talk about it, even though today, first category, you're all right. You've got half an hour, but after that, there's only like 15 minutes between categories. You're not going to be able to talk too often much. So, the biggest thing, make sure you take just enough to start with to sample, because you're going to be, sam you're going to be sampling 19 <laughs> portions of barbecue is what you're going to be sampling. So pace yourself. Even though it's really good, I would not try to eat everything put in place. Okay? Kind of Any questions on this? I'm going to be right here. If you have a question during the judging, you got a question, I'll be glad to answer it then. You got the water, so we'll get you, once the time comes, we'll get you to lay down your water so it won't get knocked over. Uh, no other questions? How many inches are going to have? 19. 19. Well, well, I'm sorry, five first ones. Then half an hour, you get five more. Then every 15 minutes, you'll get five. And the last of someone is four. I think you get three entries of five and then one entry of four. Okay. 